Col Diretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi. Coldiretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi. Coldiretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi.
Col Diretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi. Welcome and welcome back to the meeting for all the people online, for all the people here at the Rimini Trade Center, where we're going to see new parts of the world, to have encounter of culture, and above all, in this hall, you see that there are many, many stories about the importance of international cooperation for a crucial topic, uh, especially now, that is the challenge of nutrition in times of pandemic. In other words, food coalition. We're going to talk about this together with distinguished speakers that uh, have been and will be um, concrete actors, active actors here with us or connected online. I would like to welcome Agnes Kalibata, U.S. Secretary General Special Envoy to the 2021 Food Systems Summit in New York next month. She should be connected with us. There she is. We give you a warm welcome, a warm hug from Rimini. We also welcome Maurizio Martina, Deputy Director General of FAO, who was also Minister of Agriculture in Italy. Thank you, former minister, who is here in representation of the FAO. Thanks to Ettore Prandini, president of Col Diretti. On behalf of a great reality that is present at the meeting, able to talk about innovation, we set you, and then we set the uh, deputy minister. Marina Sereni, deputy minister for foreign affairs and international cooperation, sitting at the center of our stage and in the front line in this field, we will see why Italy has become the promoter of an important journey, an important project that she will tell us about. And also, I would like to give a warm welcome from New York, I think, uh, Sister Alessandra Smerilli, who is a renowned economist, and she is uh, Under Secretary of the Dicastery for the Service of Integral Human Development for the Faith and Development Sector Economic Advisor to the Pope. Thank you, Sister Alessandra, for being with us. There is this big applause that is all dedicated to you. Well, my uh, introduction is pretty easy in comparison with uh, such a distinguished panel of guests. What is uh, food? In a few words, it is uh, life and community. It is a way for care for people and conveys strategic and sustainable vision for territories. So it is present, but it is especially the promise of the future. With the pandemic, we have seen dramatic situations in our communities with a serious economic crisis that we are now 
trying at our best to defeat and to overcome. We try to recover every single day, and we have seen the importance of cooperation. Cooperation has shown to have a capacity of response that are particularly successful. And if there is a, an economic and social and political area where Italy can give a contribution is in the uh, food systems connected to the objectives that Italy, along with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, are being pursued with a strong uh, power. And that's why Food Coalition was born. It is an initiative promoted by Italy within the FAO, a true alliance, please correct me if I'm wrong, among international organizations, uh, countries, civil society, and uh, uh, private knowledge and sectors. Italy participates with a total contribution of 3 million euros. That's just the first contribution. But this process has had important steps in Italy with a pre-summit last uh, July in Rome, and then a month before with the summit in Matera that uh, ended uh, with a declaration that uh, is a reference point now, the first reference, the first declaration at a global level. And all this concerns and uh, sets uh, as its uh, main uh, uh, objective the uh, World Summit uh, of the United Nations, where all the proposals will be uh, discussed uh, and synthesized uh, uh, also on occasion of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And everything uh, happens uh, uh, at a time where we have big international events with the presidents of the G20 and also the cooperation with the UK for the conference about uh, climate change. So the New York Summit, and our guests will talk about this, aims at creating a global governance system for agriculture with the ultimate goal of zero hunger by 2030. We've repeated this multiple times, but it is clear that after the pandemic, there are many, many issues, many, many emergencies from combating increased poverty and inequalities, agroecology, climate change, innovation, and development. So. It is a um, journey that requires great synergy as never before. Uh, that's what we have been saying these days during the meeting where there is uh, a debate for politicians and other representatives. So we have to go beyond the obstacles, especially considering the food sector. So I would like to start with Madame Kalibada, who has also been the Minister of Agriculture in Rwanda until 2014. Uh, we said that today she is UN Secretary General Special Envoy to the 2021 Food Sum System Summit. So what can the New York summit uh, be useful for? How can we explain this to all our European citizens and world citizens? Why can this be a turning point and at what conditions? Thank you so much uh, for, for the introduction that you're putting to this. And let me just step back one second and really appreciate and thank the Italian government for the work that has been done in really recognizing and putting food security at the forefront, whether it is the material declaration, whether it's the leadership with the G20 in, uh, within that context, but also now with the food coalition, where nutrition, um, reducing food waste and loss, sharing food resources, and, and ensuring an end to hunger really is building the big, one of the, the, the most important coalitions of our times. And why is that important? And it takes me to the conversation and the question you're asking around the journey to, to New York. The journey to New York is about a number of things. It's about coming through on SDGs because since 2014, just to put it in context, for many parts of the world, hunger started increasing as a result of climate change. But we've also just had a report come out, uh, the IPCC report, that shows that things are getting worse. So New York has to be a turning point. We came to Rome and we appreciate very much the support we got from the Italian government. We came to Rome, we launched the, the, the pre-summit. We really used the pre-summit to come together as a global community. For us, the part of coming together as a people's summit was the most important part of coming together in, in Rome and really discussing the things that we need to take to New York. Now, heading to New York, there are two things that are very critical. 
we need to define which what each country is going to do. Every country has to have clarity. We have 147 countries now that are engaging in national dialogues, but national dialogues have to have a basis and of, of of what they get to do in the next 10 years. And that basis, we are calling it the, the national pathways that countries will put forward. For the first time, these countries will have pathways that talk about how the different sectors around food systems come together to deliver some of the most critical things that we signed up in the SDGs. So that's number one. Heads of state will stand, st step forward to deliver ambitious national pathways that talk about how they are going to deliver on food systems on hunger, on climate and biodiversity, and on prosperity. Coming out of COVID, we know that prosperity is extremely important and many people are suffering. But the next thing, I said two things, the next thing that is extremely important is we've decided we'll come together as a community. One thing that Rome brought out that I saw the most is the anxiety that people have around how we get to deliver action. There's a whole anxiety out there and we must deliver action, come to New York. Heads of state must deliver action. Civil society must deliver action. Young people must deliver action. All of us must deliver action. We are packaging this in what we are calling coalitions areas of action. So we are right now working on areas of action. One of these you just we just we are talking about here, the coalition for food, the food coalition we are talking about here, but there are going to be a few more that will be launched. And those areas of coalition are the areas we are coming together as a global community where we are saying come 2030 we must show that we've done something different in the next 10 years. So I hope that New York can deliver those two things for us, where heads of state step forward and really talk very strongly with strong voices around national pathways and delivering on a food, food uh, uh, an approach to food systems and then on delivering on, on coalitions that will deliver uh, some of the, around some of the most important things that we care about in the in the next 10, 10 years ahead of us in the decade of action. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've mentioned a very important uh, word. You said that uh, this meeting will be a meeting of a community. You will meet as a community. And that's what we were talking about. We want this contribution to go beyond individual roles. You've been minister. You have a lot of experience in, in this sector. Italy is an ideal partner. So how does FAO contribute to bring forward this kind of initiative? Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, really uh, nice to be back to the meeting in presence. So thank you so much for uh, this invitation. I would like to uh, say hello to Anja Scalibata, Agnes Scalibata for the work we did together in the pre-summit that was held in Rome uh, towards the end of July. Also, as Italian, I would like to say that I am proud of the work that our country and our government has done. Marizia, Marina Sereni is here, and I would like to thank the whole Italian government for the work that is being done in this particular moment on these uh, topics, in particular with reference to multilateralism that is still there and will have a fundamental role in the future. We have a tradition of our own, our specificity. I always like uh, recalling Expo Milan 2015, because together with Ettore Prandini and other people in this room, we believed in that event. And uh, thanks to that event too, we could uh, mark a way to conceive the topic of uh, food justice, food security, offering them to the world. And this makes us so proud of what has been done. This is also a way to open up uh, diplomatic uh, uh, avenues. We've uh, talked about food diplomacy of Italy. It is a kind of soft power, as someone says. I don't know whether it is a hard or a soft kind of power, but I know it is a way to stay in the world trying to work with all the others on some fundamental issues that has have to do with the life of people. 
the issue of hunger in the world today is all the more dramatic and present. Uh, our colleague, uh, Madame Kalibata, said that very well. And I would like to restate this. In 2030, the objective is zero hunger. This is the second objective of the SDG agenda. We have to know that this objective cannot be reached without accelerating uh, the actions that uh, are implemented every day in the most strategic areas. And this cannot be reached without strengthening the responsibilities and the actions uh, in re with respect to food management. We will miss this target because all the things that have happened and all the things that are happening even right now are telling us that the issue of hunger is uh, an objective that uh, risks to be missed uh, by 2030. So having the pre-summit in Rome, having the summit in New York, and pulling together all the energies of the institutions and also of the associations, of private people, of companies, and increasing the awareness uh, about uh, this uh, issue that we cannot just hold conferences, we cannot just draft documents, but we have to act concretely, implement concrete things, putting resources and actions into the field. That's the objective that we have, also in view of the big summit in New York in September, and considering the work that has been done over the last few months, in particular thanks to Italy in preparing the pre-summit that was held in Rome last July. So what does the FAO do? It is a big multilateral agency. It is a fundamental uh, piece of the UN system, and it works on the issues of uh, agricultural development. It works to help the most problematic areas so that uh, support measures can be offered to people and communities dealing with these issues. Let's consider Afghanistan. In these hours, I cannot, I can think, but I cannot think about those 4,000 women that, thanks to projects uh, supported by FAO, I, FAD, and other agencies, were able to start farming businesses in those countries. And if I think about Afghanistan again, I immediately remember the many systems, watering systems that we have installed in that country. And if I think about Afghanistan, dear Ettore, I cannot think but uh, more than 150,000 farmers that were helped by an agency such as FAO to better develop uh, their farm companies in a very complex territories such as that. So that's what the FAO does, and I'm going to conclude. It has to co try to contribute uh, even more and better in these fundamental appointments. In particular, I am thinking about the New York uh, summit to have uh, a leap forward uh, in uh, everybody's initiatives. We'll try, have to try to double our effort in half the time. We could say, that, and it's a big uh, challenge, a big endeavor, but if you want to reach this objective, we have to know that the, this perfect storm that we have before us, that includes health emergency, climate change, and world hunger, well, this is calling all of us for a new responsibility. Undoubtedly, the pandemic and climate change are two factors that are having a dramatic impact on the issue of hunger. And uh, a new gap is being uh, uh, revealed here between the North and the South. We cannot just pass this to history because we are living in a new time. It is still there and it is really dramatic. And if you consider the three factors, world hunger, health emergency, and climate change, there is a fracture that is cross-cutting many realities in the South. And these three challenges 
are present in the same place, in the same context, and are having terrible consequences on communities and people. And we cannot just turn our back to all of this. And this is also the sense of the New York Forum and of the effort that the United Nations and all of us with them are trying to make to define coalitions to act. I know that the meeting of Rimini has always been quite sensitive to this, that this uh, connecting actions to uh, connecting our words to actions. If this link is not created, our words mm, are not really convincing. Thank you. We all agree on this, uh, Mr. Martina. So, President Brandini, you are here as uh, representatives of uh, stories and experiences that in the country that in spite of the difficult situation generated by the pandemic was able still to keep the food sector alive. So first of all, during the pandemic year, I mean, the, there was an increase, almost a dramatic rise of exports, of food exports, and also of all the figures related to made in Italy production and Italian excellences. And moreover, there have been the successful stories of uh, farming companies uh, that shows to what extent people have decided to invest in quality, to invest in their local businesses. And uh, these are successful case stories. And uh, this is something that should be somehow brought at an international level and shared with international actors. How could we make this model an international model? Well, first of all, we had the opportunity to join the meeting jointly organized by the FAO and the UN, where the fight against uh, hunger was uh, discussed. And Italy uh, has uh, made its part, and Coldiretti has shared uh, its experience, starting from the involvement of the youth. Well, today we are the Italian country with the highest number of young people going back to farms and to the farming sector. And the most positive thing is that the vast majority of these young people are not children of farmers. Instead, these young people choose these pathways with a specific willingness to improve their future. And so I think that sometimes we have neglected for quite some time these topic because we should get a better understanding, a better investigate our demography because our country is aging quite quickly and we have fewer and fewer young people. So we should pinpoint tools to encourage people to have children and support them, especially during the, uh, their first years. So what has this has to do with uh, I mean, the hunger in the world? Well, it, there is a connection because uh, if we do not do anything in the next years, uh, more and more people, young and old, will abandon countrysides and uh, will move to urban centers. And uh, this is going to lead to a meaningful reduction in the production capacity in the food sector and in the farming sector. And this kind of damage would be detrimental, not just for Italy, but for the whole world. Our sector accounts for 25% of its GDP. Well, sometimes we heard people saying that our sector accounts just for 2% of the GDP. Well, if we consider just the 
production of farms is just two, three, four percent. But if we consider, I mean, the role played by farms when it comes to the food industry and the heroic sector, food distribution, we reach up to 25 percent of the GDP and uh, we generate 538 billion euros of value. So in spite of the pandemic, uh, we had uh, plus 1.8 percent of uh, uh, value that was uh, created. And again, we want to become a reference point in uh, Europe to be seen as a country that can, can take up challenges. And if we see what uh, the weakest countries need, we can state that infrastructure plays a key role because uh, when it comes to infrastructure in our country, people always tend to talk about uh, motorways, but we also need ports, we need railways. When we talk about a high-speed train, we should consider not just uh, people, but also goods, because we need uh, to have goods uh, circulating quickly, also in order to reduce uh, the amount of waste. Over the next few years, uh, sorry, over the last few years, uh, we have heard so many times uh, the quantity of food that will be needed in the future for the whole world population. But Coldiretti reaffirms constantly that first and foremost, we need to avoid waste because today 40% of the manufactured food does not even reach out to the end consumers, to citizens. and. Uh, this is a luxury that today, in 2021, we cannot afford. Nobody in the world can afford that. And that's why we need international dialogue and cooperation. That's why the New York summit will be so important. We have seen the land grabbing phenomenon of the last 10 years. So richer countries or smarter countries buy fertile land in the world. And uh, by, by doing so, they somehow subtract food uh, from countries. Let's look at China. Today in China, there is a direct interest when it comes to uh, buying out uh, fertile uh, pieces of land. That these uh, purchasing is done simply to develop internal food production and to respond to national and domestic demand. But food cannot be something you speculate with. We know that the derivatives can be created, there can be stock exchange speculation, there can be trusts and funds that are interested by speculation activities, but food is such a richness and people should never ever be deprived of such resources because then that creates serious problem. And even in our country, not just in Africa, there have been things because of which, because of the pandemic, we have doubled the number of uh, families that could not afford food. Alcohol directly tried to do something. We distributed food to three million uh, households uh, trying to support them. And we have done that uh, together with other associations. Uh, and uh, in order to be cautious, we need to work a lot on the strategies for the future. Thank you, President Prandini. And also thank you for reminding us the strict connection between uh, the highlight of our great quality production and uh, the abandoning of uh, con the country and of the farming sector. So Deputy Minister Sereni, I would like to thank you. And as our Deputy General Deputy Director Martina said, we are like an outpost, but much remains to be done. We're just at the very beginning. So considering the fact that maybe people do not think about uh, this topic every day, which are the most important aspects uh, 
of the material declaration and uh, what are you doing to get prepared for the New York summit. So certainly there is uh, something connecting Rome, Matera and New York and I'll try to explain you which is this kind of fil rouge that connects the three cities and also which is the agenda of our government. First of all, for the first time in the history of the G20, the meeting of uh, foreign matter ministries and development ministries met and food security was discussed. In other words, the quantity and the quality of food that people have available. The second uh, bullet in the agenda of by 2030, food for all, unfortunately, has been deferred and put off, as uh, Mr. Maurizio Martina said a few minute, minutes ago. So this uh, development and foreign ministers meeting tried to put back at the center the connection between the health crisis and the possibility of a deep food crisis because the risk was there. We have seen that the G20 countries wanted to be in, in the front line to build up resilient food systems. So what happened in Matera? In Matera, we tried, thanks to the Matera Declaration, to find common ground and uh, the large countries in the world committed not just uh, on a common document but also on some common action in order to define real, uh, verifiable, measurable goals uh, according to an approach that she considered the various contradictions uh, we are faced with is a multi-sectorial approach. Uh, the one of the material declaration, and uh, it considers agricultural policies, but not just those. It is a multi-level approach that also looks at uh, peripheral areas, rural areas, and urban areas. It's a multi-actorial approach that really tries to uh, get the public actors together with the private actors and the civil society. The Matera Declaration includes some urgent actions. So we call upon the international community to do something on uh, oh, these urgent matter, these urgent matters. And uh, the negotiations were not easy at all because, uh, well, as it always happens for these topics, uh, uh, different, sometimes opposite uh, positions clash, uh, especially as is far as the WTO and international trade, uh, or when it comes to climate change, uh, uh, and uh, also when it comes to the opposition between global system versus local system. And we think that we're able through the material declaration to strike a balance. We have six uh, priorities. For instance, the empowerment of uh, young people and uh, the very young people, because it's not just about producing food, it's about uh, their processing, uh, their collection. So, because this has much to do with uh, the intelligence of women. But again, we also need to invest in young people. This is another priority. We also need more investments in the farming sector and especially in sustainable farming activities. Thirdly, we need to introduce social security and social protection systems because during the pandemic, we saw that the there were uh, deep problems, as Mr. Martina said, especially in some countries. Also, Italian families, the poorest ones, had problems with food supply. So, well, the low-income countries should develop specific protection systems on a social level to better protect people. We also need to uh, do something when it comes to climate change, and we will certainly keep talking about that for years. And uh, if we were to reach an advanced level of cooperation with the COP26, we should still carry out uh, trading, and we should promote a One Health approach. We saw that at the Global Health Summit organized by the Italian presidency of the G20 together with the European Commission. It is about preserving 
uh, human, uh, plant, and animal health. Uh, and uh, the material declaration also contains uh, a tangible tool uh, to uh, reach this goal. And I hope that Mauritius and Detre will keep talking about this because they are at the very center of the action of the uh, Food Coalition. So this uh, was then submitted to the pre-summit that was organized by the UN in Rome. I really want to be clear on this because uh, we really want to make uh, people understand what we tried to do. And uh, everything we did was very important to prepare the summit in New York because we started discussing knowing that there were approaches that were so different far from ours, but we tried to find somehow common ground by talking to all the interlocutors. And in particular, we had a very important result because the transition pathways were traced towards sustainable food systems and they will consider technological innovation and going hand in hand with local traditions. And President Prandini mentioned the importance of the agri-food sector for Italy. This effort was also needed because we wanted to protect and highlight our agri-food system. And uh, somehow we were right because uh, the deputy Director General of the UN, uh, who was uh, so uh, fantastic, but Amina Mohamed, Mohamed, in her final message, underscored the fact that the one size fits all solution does not work. There is no one single sustainable food system model that can be applied anywhere. That's why we need to highlight local produce. Uh, and the traditional diets we need to promote to the rise of farmers and uh, fishermen, so protection of the landscape. So we need to promote these kind of things because it's not just about uh, the high quality food regime supplied by protein here and there. What we did and discussed led Italy towards the Paris summit. But now we need to keep working uh, in this direction because Amina Mohammed at the end of the summit said that, well, the, the, the cake is baking and in New York we will have to put the icing on it. So we will try to have a well-baked cake and uh, to have the best possible icing in New York. And then we will come back to Rome because the things that will, the decisions that will be made in the New York summit will then have consequences on the three uh, UN agencies that are located in Rome. And uh, so somehow the outcome of the New York summit uh, will have to do with the UN Roman agencies and our country. So I'll stop there and just to say that we did very important work and there was something that was not perfect in preparing the pre-summit. The NGOs did not take part in the pre-summit. I hope that uh, from Rome to New York, these actors will be recovered because they are so important. We heard indigenous people's voice, the voices of minorities, but also the voices of smaller uh, producers and farmers. So we also need to listen to the civil society, the organized society, and I think that we have enough time to reintegrate this actor heading to New York. And I'm sure that Italy and its government will do their part when it comes to this. Thank you very much, Deputy uh, Minister, for these many details. And uh, thank you also for telling us briefly everything that you've been doing for this. So, Sister Alessandra, 
We are here to talk to you. Thank you for listening to the other panelists. So many times uh, you have uh, repeated the concept of uh, food justice. And the pandemic whisks really to kill somehow food justice. But you have always been so clear and uh, accurate in your analysis. And uh, certainly we can recognize uh, the kind of passion uh, you have for this topic. But uh, you said that uh, this pandemic could also become uh, a fruitful time. Why do you believe in the food coalition and uh, I mean for which cause in particular? So first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm afraid uh, for not being there in person. I tried uh, at least to do my best to connect with you. I would like to say hello to all the panelists. I know all of them and I know they're great skills and passion for these topics. So only together we can make it, as we keep saying. And I think that Maurizio Martina can testify that the Vatican Commission for COVID immediately developed an interest for the Food Coalition because we had the impression since its very beginning that the Food Coalition is a project worth supporting. Why are we uh, dealing with these topics? But in May 2020, Pope Francis set up the Vatican Commission for COVID. And uh, well, probably he thought that it was important to start thinking about uh, the consequences of COVID. And especially he understood that that would have been a watershed event with important social and economic repercussions. So somehow he decided that we had to be audacious and brave enough to start preparing the future. And uh, preparing the future is different from getting ready for the future, because if you get ready for the future, some simply you wait for something. Instead, preparing the future means to do things that will make the future very like as if as you would like it to be. So it's about food for all and health for all, as Pope Francis said. That is why we have been very much committed to the pre-summit and we will certainly follow with a greater deal of interest the work of the summit. We are also working on, the, on other key uh, occasions. And uh, so we really want to adopt the approach that Pope Francis recommended to all of us. So it's about first listening and then creating connections because this is what we can do from Rome, from the Vatican, trying to get the whole world together and try to inspire new innovative solutions. Probably we are not going to be the ones implementing that, but still we will see we underscore the importance of providing assistance to the weakest of people in society because there are so many actors that can do so much. And uh, when we talk about uh, food justice, uh, we refer to the fact that food insecurity in the world, and we know that very well, is not simply about uh, the lack of food, uh, not at all. That means uh, noticing that there is no proper and uh, equal access to food for everybody. So food justice means uh, that uh, many people in the world still have no access to food. Pope Francis says that the right to food is an alienable right and uh, let somebody die uh, because of starving is uh, uh, is a crime. 
So we have seen that there are so many key drivers favoring food injustice. It's quite complex as a problem. It's not easy to understand the root causes. And that's why, together with the FAO and the UN, these institutions are working for, with so many governments in the world to do something tangible and concrete. But as Maurizio Martina said, we need multilateralism more than ever. And we need multilateralism that doesn't simply mean to have green lights from everybody to go on, not at all. That's why I believe that the food coalition is very important. Not long ago, I joined a call and uh, in, from Geneva, we were being told the advancements when it comes to patents on uh, vaccines. So there are 200 patents for each vaccine. So it seems to be easy to get rid of patents, but it's not. And while we're being explained the status of negotiations, a sister that leads from the US our health task force that is trying to make vaccines arrive where they are not there yet. So she told us, once you will agree on the negotiations, we will be ready for the next pandemic. In the meantime, those who had to die would have would have died. So that means that we need to keep working in order to make progress. But if we really want to fix the uh, emergency situations, if you also want to find uh, new food systems and new food chains, we need to experiment and to test. And according to our understanding, the Food Coalition is a big effort of many that get together. And who can guarantee so many economic resources? Who can sort of provide this kind of warranty and uh, switch to cooperation projects shared by many stakeholders? This is a mechanism that is based on free willingness to join. That is why Food Coalition is and uh, remains a pillar, but uh, this is again a system that requires voluntary and uh, I mean strongly willed uh, intention to join. We need, uh, especially in the beginning, to see very motivated people, and Italy certainly was extremely motivated, maybe even at the time when not so many people believed in uh, something like the Food Coalition. We need extremely motivated people, especially in the beginning, but it also needs uh, active uh, responses. Why should I join? Because uh, I need to have the perception of fairness in the level of results that are attained. So we need to be clear on one thing. If you commit to the Food Coalition and the level of commitment will lead to a widely shared beneficial results. So this needs to be clear. Also the, th the fact that nobody can say themselves alone, no improvement in food systems, in distribution is possible to be made by just one country alone. We need to get together, and especially we need a system governance setting the conditions to avoid self-exploitation situations where just one country exploits too much the resources. And then, Oh, there is another task that uh, the COVID Vatican Commission really wants to fulfill is about uh, young people and uh, we want to make young people be heard, not just because young people are passionate and highly committed and active, but also because they're already working on so many products. That is why it is important 
to spread the word and uh, inform the world of what many young people are already doing, because this could be a great encouragement. We need everybody's work and uh, Sometimes we get criticism because people say, oh, well, this is so interesting and nice, but then unless we get rid of the multinationals, we will never get out of the situation. Well, that kind of action requires time, but we can think about the future. And so I think that the Food Coalition is key to change things. Thank you, Alessandra. You raised upon many, many topics. So I have a second round of questions, but not many, not a, a lot of time for the answers. But I'm sure that you will be very, very quick. So from uh, uh, Swar Alexander's words to Agnes Kalibasa, because, well, Swar Alexander, Sister Alexandra raised so many topics. So having a solid governance to avoid, uh, I mean, uh, opportunistic situations so, and the power of international cooperation. Agnes, how can we uh, avoid these risks? So we know that these risks exist because the world is also made of this. No, thank you. And um, I want to really appreciate again uh, hearing Sister Alexandra speak, hearing the Deputy Minister speak, the urgency that is being called, but also the reconnection to Rome and the, uh, the, the, the urgency between Rome, the Material Declaration and New York. So extremely important areas, but also the leadership of Italy standing out um, really and putting your best foot forward. Now, with regards to Malta, uh, Malta multinational corporations like you've said, um, let's, let's admit the fact, the simple fact is for over the last probably 30 to 50 years now, there's been a major move to drive down the cost of food and most of this has been achieved through the work that major multinational corporations do out there in terms of engaging in food. We have much more food than we had 50 years ago. We are producing much more food than we need. We actually waste $1 trillion worth of food. So here, the, the incentives here might be the thing we need to talk about. Are the incentives the right ones? Are they incentivizing the right behavior? Number one. Number two, do we need to take in context where we are at today? Where we are at today is we really cannot afford to continue degrading the environment from a biodiversity perspective. We cannot afford to continue contributing to climate change. Yet, from an agricultural perspective, we are now contributing 34% to climate change and 80% to biodiversity loss. So industrial agriculture is, is great. It has been extremely good in feeding us, but it does have impact on our environment. And we need to step back and reimagine our system. What do we need to do from an ecological perspective? What do we need to do to live within the limits of our environment while feeding people? When I was in Italy uh, for, the, for the Rome, uh, Rome meeting, I visited uh, one of the farmers that uh, is a member of Coderete producing cheese and exporting cheese to Europe. So there's an opportunity to work with some of these farmers that are working at a small scale, but be really at the end become part of a big system. We need to bring them along. We need to ensure that we are using our environment within the means that our environment can handle. But also we need to bring so many more people along to address the question we talked about early, the issue of food security, the issue of better livelihoods for people cannot be addressed from a multinational corporation necessarily. Yes, food becomes available, but livelihoods have become so much challenged that we need to think about the opportunity that sits within uh, other means of producing food, whether they're ecological means, whether they're organic means, whether they're other means. I think all this, whatever we do, we need to keep asking ourselves, what's the science that is helping us stay within the limits of what, what our world can handle, what our environment can handle? Because if we don't, we will have another problem. I mean, industrial agriculture definitely has been part of feeding the world and will continue to be part of feeding the world. But we must ask ourselves the question, what parts don't make sense anymore and what parts do we take forward and what else do we bring on board? Excuse me, because 
that does contribute a lot. And bringing farmers like the Kudarete farmers we saw on board and having them be, be part of exporting Italy's best exports, which are there, the foods, the food that you export into the rest of the EU are some of the best and are produced by smallholder farmers farming 2,200 goats, you know. I thought that was a great example of what our future could look like, especially if these farmers are empowered to be part of functional farming systems. Grazie, grazie davvero Agnes. Thank you, thank you very much, Agnes. And I go back to Maurizio Martina. So the, you said many times that we need to consider environment, agriculture and food as uh, something that goes together. We risk to miss the zero hunger objective by 2030, yes or no, what should we do? Well, I think that we simply need uh, to be extremely frank and uh, realistic because the pandemic worsened the situation. I'm just going to give you one figure, and not too many because sometimes they make people confused, but there is a, a clear figure because over the last uh, 12, 18 months, uh, there was unfortunately a comeback of uh, hunger in the world and uh, so another 100 million people joined uh, the previous 700 million people when it comes to hunger and malnutrition. So unfortunately, the pace of uh, such an increase was dramatic because this increase corresponds to the increase that we had in the past over five years. So that is why we need uh, coalitions that try to provide uh, uh, somehow short-term answers and actions uh, because timing is very important. Italy launched uh, the Food Coalition and so this is uh, the attempt, as Marina Sereni said, to get together actors likely to act responsibly. I would like to tell you what Coldiretti does within the Food Coalition. And uh, we asked uh, Coldiretti to do something specific. And uh, uh, Campagna Mica and the Farmer's Market is a beautiful initiative. And uh, we said to Coldiretti, why don't we try to reproduce this model all over the world? So trying to set up uh, farmers' uh, networks all over the world that adopting the same rules and using the same experiences uh, can somehow recreate the same experience in many other places. Because if you have a look at what happened uh, over the last few years, and Prandini will certainly tell it much better, what, what happened, uh, the income of farmers increased. So this is the positive outcome because farmers uh, got advantages, so it was not easy, it required work, but they could improve their profitability. And uh, together with Agnes Calibata at FAO, we tried uh, to work uh, on what Marco Lucchini and the Banco Alimentare know far too well, how to build a coalition to fight against food waste, because this is another big issue. And certainly in New York, we will talk a lot about the activation of a coalition to fight against food waste and food losses. This is just to tell you to what extent we feel the need to urgent act and specifically to connect words and actions because this is the most urgent need, the need that everybody dealing with these topics feels, because especially when it comes to 
harvest uh, while timing is key. And there is all, all, only one risky thing, and I'm grateful to the meeting for hosting us, because uh, hunger is really a matter of time. Okay, we talk about health uh, emergency, that's clear. We have a very uh, dramatic problems in the world now and crisis. We have uh, many other issues, but even Hunger is a very, very up-to-date topic, a very tragic one, and we need to tackle it and try to do something. Now, President of Coldiretti, is it really possible to export this model of Campagna Amica or the farmer's market? Uh, is it just that one way to measure the happiness and the experience, but also the income that can triple and can be helpful for families and households so to keep young people in the countryside. That would be a way to export an Italian model to the world with the cities meeting the countryside and vice versa. This could be really a winning weapon. Indeed, it is possible and we are already doing this. Thanks to the summit, the pre summit in Rome, we have created a coalition of 15 countries and there's many more that uh, uh, apply that are going to apply the United States, Canada, Sweden, France, Germany, Spain, and countries that uh, are all over the world that's on the basis of the Campagna Amica and farmers market model create products that get directly from the producer to the consumer, to the citizens. And it's not just a proximity relation. It is a way not to waste food. It is also a way not to waste one's tradition, one's history, one's culture, and to emphasize uh, uh, what belongs to us. When we talk about labeling and the obligation to indicate the origin of food products, it's not just a matter of patriotism. It, it's the fact that behind the uh, product, there is the history of a community of people, of those citizens that in that area have been able to strengthen their own activities. We wish not to get to uh, one size fits for all system uh, that is used in big companies as they play a big role. When we talk about food in that sector, Everything is the same from any parts of the world. No, we are against this kind of approach. We create the uh, conditions whereby all the uh, um, big, excellent projects, the, the protection of biodiversity, the protection of com local communities can be emphasized even more. I'll make one final point. Circular economy is a fundamental now. Uh, we can also find a link to uh, the issue of a recovery, uh, which is uh, uh, energy. Everything that was used to be a waste now can be reutilized and uh, valorized again through the methane uh, plants. We were able to improve the supply chain and make it sustainable because uh, uh, some fuel was replaced by methane that is less polluting. Now it's being used also on uh, ships, and uh, we are creating the conditions so that it can expand it to any kind of organization. But please, let me say that we should not generalize too much when we talk about renewable energy. We talk about food production, and there is a big issue I would like to uh, raise for the Italian government. We are uh, in favor of uh, solar panels being installed on the roof of production units, but we are against the idea of uh, using even just one single hectare so that that land can be used for speculative activities. That's what we should focus on, because if we are going to create different assumptions with respect to the past, we want to avoid any speculative attempt to take advantage of renewable energy. We say yes to renewable energy, but only the type that can be sustainable with the strategies that we want to adapt, adopt for the next future and above all for the next generations. Thank you. Thank you, President. Very briefly, you mentioned so many points and uh, 
the last one, uh, uh, I pass it to Vice Minister Sereni. So the commitments, the competencies, the order termination are important, but then the investments are needed, the resources are needed to uh, transform uh, lives and to have an impact on communities. In a few words, Absolutely. Sisters Merili said we are talking about uh, very general systems, but in the meantime, we must take action. And I totally agree with her. Italy has already allotted 2.8 billion million euros to food coalition, and these will be 10 in the next three years. Minister Di Maio announced this uh, uh, information in Matera. It's a concrete signal and also an incentive for many other countries who adhere to the initiative. But uh, of course, it is important to contribute not just in terms of ideas, but also in terms of resources, at least from those that uh, can do that. That's not bad at all. And the second point, concrete point that we should, we should develop more uh, is about investment especially for small and medium farmers. And there is a very important uh, occasion that uh, uh, have been, uh, has been created together with different ministries and Casa Depositi e Prestiti Bank. Uh, in October, there will be the second uh, summit of Financing Common. These are 450 development banks from all over the world that will gather in Rome on occasion of the G20. The meeting will be held in October before the end of the G20. And that will be the occasion when it will be possible to once again uh, consider focus on food safety and food systems. There is a working group that has been created specifically focusing on the financing of sustainable food systems. So on that uh, occasion, with the help of Italy, with the participation of Italy, we will also uh, ask uh, all the other development banks in the world to make an innovative effort to provide the small and medium farmers with the possibility to restart and to have the necessary funding to restart. I'll stop here because there's no time left anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sister Alessandra, after the uh, three points mentioned by uh, Maurizio Martina, I go back to your three points, that is collaboration, coordination, and uh, company in the sense of friendship. We are in a place that is uh, uh, devoted to the friendship amongst people. And you have always observed that there is also three um, items in contrast, conflict, COVID, and climate change. So what is the way forward? Well, indeed, we need uh, an approach that can embrace uh, everybody. I agree with what uh, Maurizio Martina said before. Let's not forget about hunger while being busy with climate change. The idea is that climate change, uh, conflict, and we know what is going on in the world, and COVID are uh, three le weapons, so to say, uh, that may make hunger increase. They are interconnected. Uh, they generate the vicious uh, circles because hunger generates uh, conflict and conflicts generate hunger and so on and so forth. So the message is this. Let us not uh, forget uh, that uh, everything is complex and everything is interconnected. That's what is also mentioned in the encyclical Laudato Si. The cry of the hunger is also the cry of the poor. So we have to listen to that. And all the coalitions that may be deployed must consider this complexity. There are billionaires that are creating uh, funds with billions of euros uh, to fight against the climate change. But if this it does not go together with solutions for peace and uh, to fight uh, hunger and for food security and all the rest, uh, it does not make much sense. So we have always to consider the whole complexity. It's not easy in the COVID commission, in the dicastery where I work for integral development, we have proposed a very simple but ambitious plan. It's called Laudato Si Action Platform. This is an action plan for seven years. We have considered all the 17 development goals. We reduced them down to seven. Seven is a biblical number that refers to fulfillment. And so with seven 
objectives, that is, listening to the cry of the earth, the cry of the poor, changing style, lifestyle, an ecological economy based on uh, respect for the earth and the relationship amongst people, and so on and so forth. So there are seven objectives. Uh, we have defined seven categories of subjects that can do something from families to parishes and dioceses that should uh, uh, give the example, and also religious institutes and companies and associations of workers, professional associations organizations, international organizations, so seven by seven by seven for concrete plans that uh, then will all be um, included in this seven-year project, seven-year plan. It is something that is simple because we believe that by means of simple tools, it is possible to change the world. So we propose this Laudato Si action platform Everybody can uh, apply, and we do hope that uh, it can be very helpful, this Laudato Si uh, platform, for the food coalition, for the concrete projects that may result from this collective commitment in the world. Thank you so much to all of you. The cake was uh, put in the oven in Rome, so take care of it. We trust you. We wish you all the best because it's for our future. Thank you so much. Grazie. La Coldiretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi. Coldiretti è la più grande organizzazione agricola d'Italia e d'Europa, con 1.600.000 associati. Una realtà in crescita che ha esteso la propria rappresentanza dalle imprese singole alle cooperative fino alla filiera agroalimentare. L'obiettivo è promuovere il vero cibo made in Italy 100% italiano, attraverso un modello produttivo sostenibile in termini sociali, ambientali ed economici. Del sistema Coldiretti fa parte la fondazione Campagna Amica, con la più vasta rete mondiale di vendita diretta degli agricoltori tra fattorie, mercati e agriturismi.